Hello and welcome back to Super Mums. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at outsourcing, why it's really important to get to grips with the different ways of doing it, what you can use it for, and how other people really feel when they know you're not actually doing it all yourself. As always, please make sure you are liking, sharing, and subscribing so we can reach more mums with a little bit of joy outsourcing feels like a dirty word like we're meant to have it all together we're meant to be doing it all <laughs> i particularly feel this pressure sometimes because i run a youtube channel called supermom society and a facebook group called supermom society and all these kind of things and i'm like no no part of what makes me super is that i outsource <laughs> that is definitely part of me embracing being the mom that i want to be but there are different ways to look at that because people are like all oh, I can't afford to outsource, I can't afford to do this, can't afford to do that. The first one is actually to have a value on your time is really important. There are things, um, I have a virtual assistant with Supermum Society and there are things that she can get done a lot quicker because I would fall down a massive rabbit hole if I was to do that task. She will literally just go in and get the exact task done that she's meant to do. I would go in and suddenly be inspired to write a new whole new course to set up a whole new section of a website, to launch a whole new product, whereas that thing should have taken like 20 minutes. For me, it would take like four hours because I would end up having to do loads of other things around it. It's much easier, much more streamlined for her to do it. Also outsourcing to people that are more skilled in certain areas and maybe you're really bad at cleaning and you really don't like it and someone else would actually get it done in an hour, whereas it will take you four hours and then you look at how much you earn in four hours compared to how much you'd have to pay for one hour of some of someone else doing it like these things are really we don't we don't put an actual price on our time sometimes literally even if you put it on minimum wage you being paid minimum wage to do the task because it would take you so much longer it works out cheaper to get someone else in and do it and you can find different interns, uh, you can get students that will come and do like odd handy jobs, things like that. You can get VAs and virtual assistants and things in different countries that are much cheaper as well. Um, I know somebody who runs a uh, virtual assistant company in the Philippines and things, which makes it a bit, prices a bit more reasonable and things like this. It's opening or willing to open yourself up to the possibility of doing it before you just completely flat out say that you can't afford it. So if you don't have the funds, what do you do? You're gonna have to be a bit braver. I would say you have to spend something. It's usually time or money, but sometimes it's also bravery. And this one is bravery because it's about asking friends and family and outsourcing to them. Maybe you've got a friend who's equally as busy as you. I'm not saying you find friends that have nothing else to do better and they wanna come and do your laundry, but maybe they are better at a certain thing and you're better at a certain thing that they don't like doing. You can be like, right, well, I'll be responsible for that thing for you because I will get that done super quick, whereas it'll take you ages and get, give you no joy, but they really like doing the other thing. Maybe you like the bake sales and you're like, I hate baking, can't bake, but, Kate over here, now Kate loves baking. So she bakes for two, and then when it comes to the end of the year and we're doing all the teacher's presents, I love doing that. I will get that done super quick. I'll do two presents and, and do all the two presents for all the teachers and I've covered her side of things. It's teamwork, it's still outsourcing. You might be insourcing, <laughs> having to do something else in return, but there's no actual physical financial changeover going on grandparents are a great example of this and a lot of them and I do hear it and I talk to grandparents and things and I talk to friends who use their grandparents quite a lot who have said actually it's really nice to feel wanted and have a purpose again because they kind of they've retired or they don't feel like they've got as much to do anymore and actually if you whether it's just childcare or maybe there's some other areas of your life that they would really like to help in um my daughter's only two and a half, but I'd like to think when I'm really old and grey, I'll still want to help her. <laughs> so it's worth asking. The worst thing we'll say is, no, I'm really sorry, I can't do it. Um, get quite good at reading the person so you can tell if that's what they really would want to say because you don't want to push their luck. But you'd be surprised with some people how much they really are quite happy doing for other people. 
There are increasingly more and more services and apps to help with the paid side of outsourcing as well. Um, one that reached out to me because they said, hey, I feel like you guys would really like some discounts always nice they're not actually in any way sponsoring this they literally just reached out and said would I be interested in having a discount code uh, and I said well actually that's something I'm about to talk about so that would be good um it's only London based I'm afraid but I'm London based so that's how they found me and um, it's a company called Go Jeffrey and I will link them down below and they basically provide someone to do all those odd jobs they can do the food shopping they can do ad hoc babysitting they will change light bulbs and deliver post and all those kind of little niggly jobs as well that sort of creep up and you know mini stresses that we never quite get around to doing but are actually seeping our soul away inside and we're getting more and more stressed and we're not sure why those are the mini stresses they can deal with all of that so they've uh, sent me a 25 percent off coupon which i will link down below um, and it'll appear on the screen magically uh, and that is super mum 25 off um but i will link that trust the linked one to what i've said i'm feeling like i'm reading it wrong now trust whatever this link says and what's ever down below that that's correct um but yeah you can hand over all your all those random tasks to someone else it's like your butler that your second you the other one is to look at maybe doubling up things that you do outsource already so when we were looking at childcare situations and things the plan was that i was going to be mainly mum uh i would i would be the main childcare, and that was great because I've got mornings, I've got lunchtime wrap, I've got evenings, but I just needed a little bit more time um, for work-related things. Um, there are certain appointments I can't take her to. Uh, I always try to, uh, but there are certain things that I can't always take her to, and we just decided that it was, originally we did one day of nanny, and now we moved it into two mornings, and then for a little while we've had one full day in the morning, and it's going back to two mornings soon. And, well, by the time this airs, it will have gone back to two mornings. <laughs> And, but it was really key, uh, talking to other friends that have got childcare, we didn't want to be wasting time because it was only with such a short amount of time, dropping off at nursery and things like that wasn't going to work, um, didn't know any childminders that were like on our street or anything like that, so that was kind of out. Um, and we looked at the idea of having a nanny. Um, we've got friends that have got nannies um, and they seem to have a really lovely bond with the kids and as Felicity was going to be really young when we started this, we wanted someone that would get a nice bond with her and stay with us for a couple of years. But what a few friends said is some nannies are very, very strict on what it is they do. Now I'm going to use the nanny example here, but this could apply to anyone that you're doing outsourcing for. So they were very, very strict with what they did. If there was anything adult related in the washing machine, they wouldn't empty it. But if it was all kids, they would. And same with like the dishwasher. If there was like adult food plates in there, they wouldn't empty it or deal with it. But if it was just kids, they would. So we decided to specify that we wanted a mother's help. This allowed us to find someone that not only would look after Felicity, but would throw a wash on. I mean, she still has like a two hour lunch nap most days. I don't pay for someone to just be sat there, but I also didn't want to have to get home that much earlier um, if I've been out doing appointments, picking up things, meetings and stuff like that. So we wanted someone that would be happy to muck in and get involved. And actually our, our lovely nanny put it to me best. She said, oh, I see it as I'm here to make your life easier. And I was like, yes, that's, that's what we would have put in the job description actually if we'd thought of it. Um, so it's making, like I said, that applies to a nanny, but it could be that you're looking for someone that can do multiple tasks. Uh, if you're hiring a VA, specify that this might be work related, but there might be some personal tasks that appear in there, things like that. Don't limit yourself to a very specific thing. Um, Felicity and her nanny will go off and they will take stuff to the post office for me and go for a walk and then go to the swings and the park and things like that. It's kind of multitasking your outsourcing. I feel like that's a phrase. We'll go with that. One of the biggest problems I find with people when they talk about outsourcing isn't so much finding the right person. That can be a bit intimidating as well, but if it doesn't work out, you fire them and find someone else, but uh, is worrying what other people will think of them. And this can get a bit annoying. So for us, we wanted such, we had very specific hours we wanted. We wanted someone that would allow Felicity to be in the home and things. So basically having a nanny was our kind of our only option that fitted within our parameters. But people got, I, I did, I have, oh, we're trying to phrase this correctly. A few people were a bit, have been a bit funny about it as I met them because they've been like, oh, well, it's easy for you. You've got a nanny. And I was like, yeah, but I've got 
10 hours of nanny childcare over a whole week and you've got 40 hours of nursery, why? There's nothing wrong with them getting 40 hours of nursery, but how is my life so much easier with my 10 hours than with your 40 hours? Um, and I wouldn't necessarily be saying that they were going off to work for those 40 hours or anything, but it was like certain types of outsourcing were looked on with more, like, I don't have, my dad's quite nearby and he'll come and have Felicity for little bits, but he spends a lot of time up north and can't always be here. My other half's parents aren't nearby to have her and my mum's not with us anymore. So maybe deep down inside, I have like begrudge people that can outsource to their grandparents that have got that like luxury. Um, I don't voice it to them though. <laughs> I don't voice it to them. But I kind of had that about the fact that we gone the nanny route and part of the reason that we were so restricted with the hours is because we didn't want to not have her for any more hours than that after that I miss her to her back um and particularly where I live nurseries are very busy and very popular and they want minimum hours out of you and you are contracted and then some of them shut during the holidays and we didn't necessarily want that um it was what worked best for us but yeah, people can be a bit funny about the type of childcare you've gone for or the type of outsourcing that you've gone for. Nicest possible way. I know people are going to be like, that's not realistic. But if people are being funny with you, they don't deserve to be in your life. And I'm a big advocate for cutting out toxic people pretty quickly. And that for me would be someone that is toxic to you. If they're being negative about something you have chosen that is right for you and right for your experience, then yeah, you want to consider that. Beside the choice of childcare, and maybe it's like a specific childcare thing, maybe people look at the, like having a nanny as being like this massive luxury and therefore it's frowned upon slightly. Maybe with other outsourcing, it's just not seen that way. But the majority of the time is I get a lot of respect for the fact that I'm willing to stand up and say, I outsource, quite happy to outsource. And I've seen other people do the same. I wish that I had the confidence to outsource. And isn't it weird that we feel like we need to have the confidence to outsource? You know, sort of, I'll dig deeper and it is, yeah, it's more that kind of, I don't really know what I'm doing. It's something new. If you've never done it before, it's still new and scary and change is difficult. But I find it quite, quite fascinating that people feel like they need this, this confidence to outsource. The majority haven't said or reacted in a negative way about what I choose to outsource or what other people choose to outsource, what other people choose to not include in their life. Like not doing something is kind of outsourcing it. You're outsourcing it to the part of, I don't care about this thing and it's gone. Um, that's a good outsource too, I love that outsource. But the general level is actually respect. So don't feel bad about the fact that you're not doing it all. None of us are doing it all ourselves. I, I'm a big believer in saying we do believe in having it all, but having it all does not mean doing it all. One, you need to define your all. What does doing it all, having it all mean to you? And then you need to work out which of those things are better off being done by someone else, and which of those things are better off just not having in your life and things. It's a very personal, it's definitely a very personal thing. This video has gone on quite a lot longer than I intended it to. <laughs> I would love to hear some of your tricks and tips that you have discovered for outsourcing. Pop them in the comments down below. If you've got any feedback on this video, I know it's a little bit controversial, pop those down below. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.